video, I want to show you how to merge two different data sources using Excel spreadsheets function VLOOKUP. So in this exercise, we're going to be looking at two different data sets. The first is coming from the UK government, and it is flight data from 2011 from the Department for International Development. So this was published in late 2013, and as you can see from the website, it's actually very straightforward to access. All you have to do is go to the uh, UK government website, download the CSV file, and we will end up saving that to disk. Now, you'll see that as part of this data, um, it has the departure airport. Here we have Luton, here we have Glasgow, Heathrow, and then the arrival airport. Now, Basically, this is the government trying to make it a little bit more difficult for us to analyze this data because you can see that the airport codes are not very consistent. Now, there is an international, uh, there are two different, in fact, international standards for airport codes. IATA is one of them. It's a three-letter code. You might have seen it when you go to the airport. So what I want to do is I actually want to merge this information with the information that actually gives us the airport codes, the IATA codes, which is available already. There's been lots of people working on this throughout the world, and this is available from Data Hub, which is a great website if you're looking to find different data. So we can preview that to make sure that it has the sort of things that we want, and indeed it has the city, name, country, it has the altitude if we want to go that far. Um, longitude and airport ID, latitude, um, etc., etc. So that has what we want. So we will go ahead and we can actually just download that as well. Now, let's flip over to our DFID spreadsheet. You can see that this has the information that we were just looking at before, uh, but it doesn't have the IATA code. And the way that we're going to do this is to merge two different sets of data, but we have to actually look this up because this is done in a really not standard way. So what I think the easiest thing to do is we're going to actually perform a few different tasks here to clean all of this information up. So departure and destination airport, it doesn't really matter. We want both of these. So let's go ahead and give that a copy. I'm just going to start a new spreadsheet. Hit paste from the departure, and well, same with the destination. In principle, I don't want um, our header row in there, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that, and then scroll down to the bottom here, all the way to the bottom when we can, and we'll just go ahead and paste that as well. Now, what we can do is we can go ahead and just do a really quick move into the data tab, sort that from A to Z, and then you might know that we have a few duplicates. We see an awful lot of London Heathrows there. The easiest thing that we can do is we'll just press the Remove Duplicates button. And you can see that that's popped up something that says Select All in our column. We're going to remove all the duplicates. And that leaves us with just 269 airports that uh, locations that we want to be trying to find the code for. So now I'm going to open up my airport data. Here's my airport data. You can see there's this airport ID, which really we don't need, so I'm just going to delete that right away. And we see that it has the airport name, the city name, country, IATA, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to our spreadsheet that had the name of all the airports, and I'm going to copy and paste that over uh, into a new spreadsheet um, in the same workbook. This isn't necessary to have it in the same workbook, but I'm just thinking it's going to make it a little bit easier for us to work with here on this screen. So. Um, what we have is we have the name of some place, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to associate it with this IATA airport code. Um, we're going to have to try a few different things because we don't really know, how, as it's not standard, we don't know if they're giving us the airport name or if they're giving us the city name. 
But for the time being, we're going to work with assuming that they've given us the airport name. This is where our all-important VLOOKUP function comes in handy. So to add VLOOKUP, uh, just as simple as adding the equal sign, and then VLOOKUP. And in this case, we are trying to find the lookup value, uh, which is simply this cell here, A1. And the next thing that we're going to do is we'll put a comma in there, and then it says table array. So the idea is where are we looking up this value? And the answer is that we need to look in this sheet B over here, uh, and we need to at least go through to the FAA code. All right, and you can see that it says global airports and then looking up columns from A to D. The next thing that it says is column index number, and this is saying, what does it want us to return? So it doesn't want us to, it, we want to return this IATA code, and that's in column one, two, three, four. So we simply enter the number four. And then it says, do you want to um, basically find the very first match, or do you want to find the exact match? And if you just want to find the first match, then it's true. But what we want to find is an exact match. So we're going to enter false there, close the bracket, and we're done. And you can see that that didn't work. But that's because that's for Aberdeen. And what we're looking up is the airport code and not necessarily the city code. And Aberdeen is a city. So we've got a few things there. We can see that Alejante is now ALC, Antalya is AYT, um, some of the things that we actually want that's working just right. Perfect. Um, that's still not quite enough. So why don't we go ahead and we can take a look to see if um, there are maybe some others in Aberdeen. So one of the first things that I'm going to do is I'm going to really quickly do a control C and I'm going to do a right click here and paste special and paste in the values. That's because if we start reordering things or playing with things, it might break the formula. So for the time being, I just want to make sure that we have a hard copy of we know that already that Antalya is AYT, etc, etc. So the next thing that we are going to do is we're going to actually now check to see if Aberdeen is the name of a city, and if so, have it give us the airport code. So again, we're, we can just do the VLOOKUP. And we will do A1 again. Now this is really important. In the table array, based on the way that it's organized, we don't have to reorganize any cells. But what it does, what the VLOOKUP function is doing is it's looking for the left at the very first column in here and associating it with a different column. So if we select in the table array to look up from B to D for the IATA code, um, then it will be looking in the city first rather than in the name. And in this case, instead of starting here with this is column one, we're going to start with this is column one and go one, two, three. So we'll just put in a comma there, three. And again, we want the exact response. We don't want a close match. Type that in, false, and we can see that Aberdeen is now coming up with ABZ. This spreadsheet still needs a lot of tidying up. But in principle, that's how you merge two different data sets using VLOOKUP. If you'd like to see how I tidy the spreadsheet further, stick with us. Otherwise, this lesson is over. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the exact same thing where I'm copying, pasting the value. So this has the potential to get a little bit confusing from here on out. So I'm going to add back in some column headers. So I'm just going to insert a new row here, and um, I'm going to just have some names that I prepared earlier. So we've got the name of the uh, airport, and then we have the actual value. So it's N name, it's checking against the name of the airport, and the actual value N of the city. Or we have here, this, uh, you can see it's the actual formula, so I've called it VL name for VLOOKUP against the name, or VLOOKUP against the city. 
There is one more column that we need to actually do. Uh, and let's go ahead and insert that. And it's actually going to be a duplicate of column A. So um, what we'll do is we'll call this still the original. So this is what DFID or the UK government have called these various things. But in order to edit these and find a few more to make sure that they're on the list, we might need to start editing these names a little bit. Um, so I want to go ahead and start with that. So um, at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give that a little bit of a sort. Um, and basically, I'm going to make this one where we have actually probably the most here, the main reference point here for our um, codes. So you can see at the top we have a number of zeros. I'll explain what that is in a second. Um, and then we have a good number of the codes, and then we have a bunch of NAs. So for any of them where we have the actual uh, code there, I'm just going to copy and paste that across because we're going to make this here the main reference. Call GA for the Guardia, same sort of idea. Same with Luxembourg and Milan Malpensa. And of course, when you're doing this, you're going to want to make sure that you put that in the right place. <laughs> um, and there we are, very last one in Yaoundé. Okay, so that is one quick way of getting that sorted. So let's do that as same sort of filter again. And we see that we've still got a big set of NAs in here. So I want to see if maybe there are some really small changes on this that might help us to actually find the airport themselves. So Algiers with the S, that is an English spelling, but um, without the S is another common spelling. And so there we go. You'll see that now in this cell here, it has actually found the airport code. So sometimes it's just about making sure that this data matches up with what we've got in our uh, other data set that we're trying to merge with. So Algier, I've seen Alma Atta before with a hyphen, that seems to do it. Ankara Turka, it's Turkey, but let's see if we just take away the Ankara and then find something. Uh, same thing with Baltimore, if we just take off the MD for Maryland, uh, we start finding it. So I'm gonna continue to clean up uh, the spreadsheet doing that see that some of these have a value of zero. Now, what does that mean? It means, unlike the NA, where they couldn't find the name at all, that they found the name, but there's a blank field. So if we, for example, see here Brisbane, and then there are blank fields there. Now, it happens that um, Brisbane has more than one airport and more than one entry, so we've got that one there twice. But we can see that uh, it's otherwise YBAF, or we know that Brisbane International is probably BNE. That's probably what we're looking for. So in that case, we're going to just put in BNE. Um, but in some of them, they have one of the IATA airport code, but they don't actually, or they don't have the IATA airport code, but they do have the IACO airport code. So Let's just check if we can do it that way. Um, and so that's just a matter of pulling in a different column. And if we say column four there, um, that pulls in an airport code. And same for a few of these. Yeah, well, so that's better than nothing. So why don't we just copy that down and paste special always value itself and paste it in there just like that. Now, I happen to have flown to Basel before, so I happen to know that that's just BSL. Um, but for other ones like Montserrat, where I don't know what the airport code is, the last thing that I'm going to do to tidy the very last little bit of information that we have missing is to go ahead and pull in three digit codes by looking that up on the internet. And it's just as simple as Googling Montserrat Airport and we see what comes up is the code is actually 
just there coming right up on Google. So all we do is we flip back over to our Excel and I'm just going to paste that back in. And I'm going to do that for the last few, you'll see, um, the last 40 or so. I've now tidied that up and you'll see that this entire row is now completely full and if we sort there again, we can just see there's no zeros, there's no NAs, etc. So the very last thing that I want to do here is to now associate this um, not just with the, um, the name, but let's also go ahead and pull in the country because we have that in the data set and as well the latitude, longitude, uh, and heck, we could even pull in altitude if we wanted to, city, country. We're just going to pull in all of that in information here. Now we're going to be using the three digit code as our main reference point. So there's one last thing we need to do here, which is if we go back into this spreadsheet, um, the IATA code was here in column D, but what I've done is I've just copied and pasted that and moved that over into column A, uh, because that's going to be the first column in the array that the VLOOKUP looks up. So let's go ahead and enter our VLOOKUP and then we're going to select that, D2, uh, the table array now, uh, because that's moved here, is A through to H. And for city, we want column 1, 2, 3, and then false. And we can see that that's Abidjan. Now, one thing that we can really quickly do on this uh, because we're going to pull this across to a number of different columns. If we quite simply put the dollar sign in front of the D, that means it's not going to shift as we pull this over to the next column. So it's not going to automatically, if we look here, look for E2, because that's not what we want. We still want to be looking at D2. Um, and the same can be said here for our columns. We don't want these columns to shift either. So I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the A, dollar sign in front of the H. Uh, and that doesn't change that answer, but if we pull it over, um, that, that's helpful. Now, the thing is that we need to change the column is what's different. So that will be now for uh, Abidjan and Cote d'Ivoire. The latitude, I believe, is just column five. No, it is not. It is column six. Lo longitude is column seven, and our altitude is column eight. And then again, if we just select all of those, double click that bottom right corner and fill down, we have the spreadsheet that we want to work with. Well, almost. The very last thing that we're then going to do um, is that we're going to actually pull this back into our original DFID spreadsheet so that we can get merge in the city, country, etc. there. Right, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over to that worksheet. This is the different flight data. Um, you can see that this has a departure code, a departure latitude, departure longitude, and that's pulling from um, that original one that we have there, that original reference. And that's why we had to duplicate the names before, because this is the one was associating it with the reference in our other data, and this was still keeping. So in order to find Luton's airport code, for example, we had to delete the Ingla. Uh, but in order now to associate it here, we need the that code back. Um, and you can see that this is all just um, a bunch of the lookup codes here to get the departure latitude, departure long longitude, uh, city, departure country, and destination code, etc. And that's how we now merge two data sets. And there's lots of fun that we're going to have with this final data set.